All right, welcome to episode 22 of the Dotson Restoration. Uh, this episode is about installing the bucket seats, as somebody guessed from an Altima two-door coupe. And we finally get the wiper arms removed after trying for months, finally get those apart. And I actually paint the inside of the fenders and the inner fenders and get those all seam sealed and get those all, I think I even get them back on in this video. 14 bolts on each get them all converted to six millimeters so uh, like subscribe and comment if you want to see more but this is episode 22 all right dog and i also want to say a shout out to uh kentucky yankee for mentioning me in one of his videos i appreciate that and tell him to check out my channel he's doing an awesome job on his 66 520 that he's trying to get done by september so uh thanks again kentucky yankee or benny for uh, mentioning my little channel here. Thanks. <laughs> Talk won't stop barking. We're there, bag. So obviously there's that reinforcement. Uh, you can see there's a piece of steel support underneath there. From here to here though, where the where the seat track is, is like dead flat. And the other one was like here. It's pretty much dead flat. Wow. I got lucky there. I am so lucky. I think I can put it in front of this bump. Otherwise I have to cut this out and make it flat, but I don't think I'm going to need to. I think because I need to get it on that lip. This lip, oh, man, these seats are almost identical. I did not plan that. I just found some seats and they're a good price and they're local. I went and bought them. Let's pop this out real quick. Then we just got a couple little tackaroos to drill out. That'd be fun. Wow, this would be a lot easier than the hard body seats when I put the maximum seats in the hard body. And the step one is I uh, hit it with a sander to find the spot welds, and I just drill a hole in the center of each one. Then I drill a little bit bigger hole, bigger uh, bit size. Try not to go through the the floor though, if I can avoid it. All right, it just happened. I was just drilling with like a three inch bit. And it just popped off three places, four places, five places. Let's go to this one. Oh, shit, that one through. <laughs> A little too easy. so far. That wasn't too bad. Well, that's actually pretty thick. That is thick stuff. So I only did one hole. That's not bad. And weld up those little divots. Not bad. I'm impressed with myself. A little rust. That's actually some good thick steel. I the bench seat, so... Now do the other side. Well, I'll do this side first. So here's the bottom of the seat. The harness. I'm gonna cut these pins off, make it easier to install. Just two little motors, or actually maybe three, three motors. Okay, so I just remove those little pins, make it a little lower and so I don't drill more holes in the floor. And I just need to figure out the power probe. Which one is which? So obviously we got the seat belts in here. Oh, the airbag is the, uh, let's unplug the airbag. We don't want to set that thing off during the seat. Okay, that's unplugged. Discard it, get rid of that. Now we've got no airbag danger. Now we're just down to a couple of big fat thick wires. Ground wires, I have no idea what's what. Look at these motors. Okay, so here's the switches. That's a mechanical up down thingy. So this is front, back, back, and down. I'm thinking two wires actually go to the seat belt. 
and then fattest wire is probably power, not very big, power of the motors and a bunch of grounds. Oh, that works. That was easy. That button goes, oh, that's down. Oh my gosh, it goes way lower. Oh, it's a tilty seat. Oh my, it's so cool. The seat X goes up and down. You got, you can actually lower the front. Wow, that is way lower. Lower the back. Oh, that is gonna be so much better. Oh. That was so easy. I literally hooked up the first wire, the brown wire, gave it 12 volts, and the up and down works. Now, no way. That was too easy. Let's try again. So, hooked on there, give it 12 volts. It's doing something. Oh, the back is moving. The tilt is working. Okay, that works too. Now, does that go forward? Oh my gosh. One wire hookup. What do I want? I want to go that way. Ooh, that didn't sound good. That's all the way back. Wow, that was so amazing. I can't believe that. One wire, now I lowered it down like four inches. I can do front and back. The back goes, the back tilts. This front goes up and down, and this goes forward and backwards. What the hell is this do? This is like another thingy or whatever. I thought that did the seat up and down, but this one did. Let's see if the quest was that way. Alright, let's put it back in again. I just put it in this seat weighs a ton, but... Wow. I think it's heavy. Okay, I just put the seat in. I couldn't get it in before with the headrest on, right? I had to take the headrest off. Now I put it in, not only with the headrest on, but the headrest in the highest position. And it actually uh, fit. Alright, let's try it out. Got the seat all the way forward now. Okay. Well, that's way forward. Way against the wall or against the wall. It's not too bad. That's hard to tell with that steering wheel. I can tell I'm crooked. So the seat now needs to go towards the passenger to the right. Hey. I'm thinking at least an inch or two. So I'm not, I don't want to cut the tunnel. I'm going to have to modify the leg. You know what I think of that? I could move that hole to the side if I have to. Because, yeah, there's not a lot of room. But I can definitely move the track back. I did not need to push the track. I pushed it all the way forward. Yeah, I could. I need to make an extension cord. Because my truck. Actually, my truck would reach if I put the front tier back where it goes. I may be able to reach. I do have an extension for the Power Pro, that's right. Wow. This is uh, it's a lot easier than any other seat we've done. That is on the floor. That is like, like made to fit in there. Put the headrest down there. So, it's all up against the back. Yeah, so that's all the way back. But obviously, I, oh, I gotta tilt the seat. I can tilt the seat to go back more. Uh, okay. What should I do? What should I do? Here's a little lever to go on the back. Oh, cool. What do I do? I still don't know what this does. Let me try it again. What does it look? I think this on my daughter's. Oh, it's the lumbar support. It's lumbar. Oh, wow. I thought that the seat. Maybe it was on the Versa that made it go up and down this lever. It's lumbar support. Cool. I can feel it. Okay. So it's all electric except for the lumbar. Alright, so I need to push the track back because I got in with the seat over to the right. I move the seat to the right. Okay, so the passenger seat, the right hand seat, 
I gotta give me the pigtail, but I don't need it because, well, yeah, I do for the seatbelt warning light if I really want that. But it has the airbag, which I need to not hook up. And, oh, does it have sensors to measure how heavy you are? Let's see if there's airbag or not. I think there's sensors in the seat. Oh, is that what that yellow thing is? Who cares? What is this? Moisture working technology. That's not for me. Okay, let's cut these pins off. This one will be easier to mock up because it's already lower and it's manual, so I can find their correct placement. Let's whack those off. Okay, I just put in the passenger seat. Since it's mechanical and adjustable, it was easier. I actually got the legs. Look how much room there is in between the seats. It's more than my 620 or my 720, even my hard bike. Something's not right. I don't think I've ever had that much room. God, my 620, I can't remember, but my 720 I had that for 10 years. It was less than that, I think. All my D21s, WD21s. My R50 was wider, but that was a wider vehicle. That's weird. So, center seats. Still about an inch off. Yeah, I gotta pull that track back. I got that track on the bin. I was just thinking. This angle, and this is almost just a bolt-in. All I gotta do is pike up this leg, bend it to match the angle of the 521, drill some holes. I don't even think I need to make brackets or anything. This is so much easier than putting in D21 seats, which I have right here. So I put these in, uh, I don't know, see how they're, it's like a four inch difference between the left and the right side. All these new Nissans, I'm taking them on my Versa, Sentra, Leaf, like the Quest, they're all flat on the bottom. Uh, so, just like this truck is flat on the bottom. And that's kind of weird. So we need electricity. Okay, so I don't need to modify the floor, that's cool. I think I just need to modify this one hole, because I've only got, I need to go over one more inch to the center, or move the steering wheel over one inch. I think I'll move the seat over an inch. Uh, need to make sure that I'm assuming the center is here. All my markings I painted over, I painted over up here. But uh, I can move the seat forward like six inches with the motor. And it can still go back some more. So I got tons of adjustment in the motor tracks. So, and it almost lines up with this dent. So I'm thinking I maybe I'll just cut that off and bend it down. And re weld it and match the angle here or make some tabs. Whatever. Uh, basically, it's sitting on the floor, I think. And the floor is not perfectly level. The track is perfect. It's pretty much sitting on the floor. Uh, maybe I will just put a weld, weld a tab on here and stick it out and put a nut on it and just bolt it on though. But I need to modify the seat if I want to move the seat over. This round thing is too big on the inside. It seems like I'm really far away here though. That seems, I guess that's normal. Hmm. Well, let's try it again. I just measured it eight inches in there. You can see. Look, there's the center. Yeah, I just measured the tape measure, just one inch off. And the only thing that's hitting down there is that big round footprint. So if I cut off, you can see I got another half an inch before the track. You know, I could probably cut the corner off that track. Because I only get about a half an inch if I cut the foot. But if I cut the track, cut a little half inch off. Like the inch of the track. I'll have to take the seat out again and look at it. That'll probably get me three quarters of an inch. I need an inch. Whoa, so close, man. This is so close to just being a bolt in. That side, I think, will work. Amazing how easy that was. I'm really shocked. I like that. Oh, I like the way it looks. It's pretty comfortable. Got a nice cushy back. The seat goes up and down. If the seat went up higher, I could probably put this bump into the glass. 
get another half an inch of space maybe, I don't know. It's good enough for me. Magnet isn't strong enough to hold the light, it's so stupid. Is it open or not? There we go. Yeah, from this angle, it definitely needs to go in just a touch. Alright, first step. I cut these rivets and got rid of these legs. So I need to move the seat over one inch. So here's something interesting. I measured the center of the floor. I measured from this, the center of the tunnel, this screw, which I think is the center of the truck, to here. It's like 13 and 5 eighths. Did a straight line up. That's here. The center of the steering wheel, original truck is here. It's exactly one inch off. Oh my God, is one of the seats in. A seat, big old loop is hitting here. Now it doesn't hit on that side. That side seems to be good. But this side, that big round thing I just cut off, is hitting this tunnel. I wanted to put it right here, but it's too round. I don't want to notch the floorboard. So I may need to cut off a little bit more. Not here, but on the track. Okay, just got them in. It's feeling pretty good. Obviously I need to cut that off. Still needs to go over a half an inch, but I'm exactly three and a half inches from the side, like the other side is. It needs to go over another half an inch. I think I'm gonna have to shorten this two inches. But uh, you can see down there, cut that corner off. And so now I just need to apply electricity, pull the track back. And I think I can get it to scoot over another. Yeah, I think I can get it to scoot over another half an inch, I think. Ah. Uh, I don't know if you can see, but this is looking pretty good. Oh, it's a dirty seat. It's looking good, man. That seat is definitely higher. Or the angle is different. But that one goes up and down. That one does not. Alright, I got some black paint, flat plate on the underside. It's looking better. Better. I got some paint on the, I can't say outside. Oh. All right, so I have a broken bolt in the fender. So I think I'll replace it with one of these clips. No, not that clip. The rib nut didn't really work. So I'm just gonna do a regular little clip. This is a six millimeter clip. I've acid washed the inside of the fenders, primed and painted them. It's a mineral rattle can, primer paint. I think I'm ready to put them back on. All the broken bolts are fixed in the body. So uh, let's put the fender back on. Also flat black painted the inner fender. Seam sealed all around my mess. Did I do the other side? I forget. Oh no, I didn't do a seam seal around the uh, thing over there. It looks a lot better. Oh, I did see him seal down here. Just make sure no moisture gets in the cab. Blocked out this. There we go. Yeah, I think there's 13 bolts. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine at the very bottom. 10, 11, 12, 13. I think there's four inside. Oh. One, two, three. Oh, there's five. 14 bolts. I missed a spot of paint. 14 bolts holding the vendor on. At least there's none under here like on the hard body in the 620. That's cool. But then again, that doesn't come off. That's not cool. Yeah, I think that's, I think it's on. So here's the left fender. This is the only nut in the whole 14 bolt fender. And of course it broke. So uh, I'm just gonna cut that off and replace it with uh, you know, one of these clips. I just put one on here and it worked pretty good, but it didn't tighten up. So I need to get an actual nut one, not one of these screw ones. Actually, that looks like one there. Looks like one there. This is probably from my old dock. Okay, 
Finally got the wiper arm link linkage assembly out of the truck so I can paint the truck. So there's two bolts that hold in this blower base, which are missing, which squeezes a gasket, which is still in good shape, perfect shape. And then that goes in from the inside of the truck. On the outside, there's a rubber gasket and then an aluminum piece of a uh, thing that may look pretty and a nut. I think this is the same as my 74. This looks familiar. I think this is how my 74 was. I can't remember. Everything's in perfect, perfect shape. It's a little dirty. Just need to clean these up. More importantly, I need to paint this thing and I can't tape that thing up. It needed to come out. So, finally got it out. Made a YouTube short about it too. Alright, so I got one of the original headlight adjuster nylons out. I think it's nylon or whatever it is. 3D printed one for a 510. Unfortunately, I think it was a 510. I forget what it was. Something on Thingiverse. Unfortunately, the hole in the middle is too big. The outside dimensions are different. Um, not sure about this dimension. I can't get it to go in the hole. So, um, uh, I got a buddy that's going to help me 3D print or reverse engineer this one. Maybe print some new ones. So, we'll try that option. Talking about 3D printing, I'm going to try to 3D print a new knob for the glove box. This is an extra glove box. You can see it's just uh, plastic. I'm going to see if I can print one of these things. Here's another option. These are uh, designed for Toyota style nylon clips. Very similar in some dimensions. Same 5mm hole. About the same overall depth. And uh, a couple minutes with a triangle file. You convert a round hole to a square hole. And uh, pops right in there. Uh, I can actually do that to all these. There's only like eight holes. So I may do that instead of 3D printing these. I kind of like that. The only thing is um, these are a little bit taller than those, as you can see. But you could cut that down if you had to. The bucket, uh, you know, the bucket does sit a little high, I think. So I, even if you went all the way down like that, still room and have your tilt. If you need more tilt down you'd have to grind it down. But I'm not sure that'll be a problem. So just another option since I can't buy those. There you go. That's what it looks like at uh, right height. So you can see the back is four inch drop. This is like basically stock height. Now, of course, it's going to settle because, you know, brand new springs. I still got to put in the battery, the radiator, the hood, the bumpers, the grill, the lights. And I took the driver's seat out, the dash, carpet. There's a lot more weight to go in, and I'm sure it'll settle about an inch. I just measured it. I think it was, uh, what is that, 28 inches? 28 inches on the front, 24 and a half on the back. I think what I'll do for now is I'll raise up the back to match a little bit, but uh, I'm ready to drive it anyways, just to get it leveled out. I have a feeling it's going to sag, and like I said, I just lowered it down on the ground for like the second or third time, so I'm sure once it bounces, I'm sure I can do a little bounce test again. Alright, so this is what I've come up with so far to solve this problem. I try to put a little dent in here where the rail goes, but uh, I've got a nut and a bolt, an old Nissan seat bolt. Put a hole in the floor. I was gonna put a piece of plate underneath, but uh, I kind of went crazy and did a big hole. The opposite. I'm gonna put the nut plate on the top. That way, I get a nice good weld around it instead of welding upside down. I can get to the back of this. I didn't think I could because there is a structure right here. But uh, my plan is to uh, I guess weld this to the floor, weld the nut to the plate, and 
going to weld this original bracket moved over on the original rail. And this one, I did the same thing. I cut it so I could bend it a little bit more to follow the contour of the floor. And it's going to go wherever it wants to go over here. I was digging through my old Nissan bolts to see if I had any extra seat bolts. And uh, I was kind of surprised how many I had. I had, I need, uh, what do I need, eight more bolts? I found more than eight in my Nissan spares. Not sure how I ended up with so many. These are for the newer Nissans with the bigger bolts. But uh, I didn't even, I forgot to ask for the bolts for these seats when I got them. I had about a few seat, seats over the years uh, from 2000 ish vehicles for different projects. So uh, I got a ton of extras. So these are way bigger than the old original seat bolts because of the seat belts tied to the seats. So that these new seats actually come with half a seat belt. So let's get that welded in. I forget if I filmed this already, but I already cut this corner off. I may cut off even another inch down. I think I need to cut it again before I try again because it just doesn't go over. I need another half an inch over. Alright, so I welded that plate 11 gauge into the floor. Got a nut welded on the back of it. And I put a piece of wood to emulate the uh, sound ending in the carpet. So the next plan is to put this, let that down, and then bolt that on. And then we'll weld that to the seat. First. You can see I clearance the seat a little bit more. Got rid of a little bit of the inner track. I could even cut more of this away, but it's pretty good. So I got the uh, bracket bolted to there. I got a piece of wood under there to give it some clearance for carpet. I got it all squared away. I measured it to the edge here. So it's exactly square. I'll lay the seat on it and tack that to that. Take the seat out and weld it up. I had to take that thing out because it was smoking pretty bad and burning. Okay, that was painful. Just had to weld the seat in without setting anything on fire. And I uh, got this one bolted. I already got this bracket welded on first. It's pretty much in the original location. I moved it just a little bit so I could weld the holes. Uh, that bracket could have actually stayed. I just needed to cut it. But I welded it back on a little bit off just so I could... Uh, you know, weld the holes to the steel. So it's actually it's in there now and I've got it almost four inches over which it's more than the other side. The other side I think it's three and a half even though it's not mounted yet. So uh, I think it's pretty good. The trick is you gotta use a battery put the seat all the way back and you gotta fold the front up so now the seat won't go down. I gotta slide the seat forward with the motor so I can actually lock the back down. So those will be kind of hidden. But um, yeah, that's the plan. So it's actually using the original style mounts and the original thing. It's got to weld a nut plate on there. Uh, it's somewhere around here. Oh, it's in the shed. I got to drill a hole in it. So it's going to go under there. 